Hey everyone, and welcome to my new series, Making a Computer and Scrap Mechanic. Now, I know I'm not the first person to try making a computer in the game, but my goal is to document the whole process and keep everything understandable for anyone who wants to watch. Also, I know there exist mods for advanced logic functions, and I'm open to using them eventually, but I want to try making everything out of discrete logic functions first to show how they work. In this episode, I wanted to start by describing the function of the six built-in logic functions and why they're going to be useful in our computer. Logic gates are the building blocks of computers and make up basically all the systems in the CPU. We can use them to make counters, storage, selectors, adders, and a lot more. The vast majority of the components of the CPU will be made from different configurations of these six basic logic gates. Before we start using these gates though, let's start with understanding how they work. Scrap Mechanic has six gates built into the game. There's the AND gate, OR gate, XOR gate, NAND gate, NOR gate, and finally, the XNOR gate. These are all accessible using the logic gate block. The logic gate block can receive multiple input signals and will output one signal. The input and output signals can either be on or off. The output of the gate is visible on top of the block. A gray top indicates the output is off, while a blue light will indicate that it's on. For all the tests though, I'm going to place down a separate light to indicate whether or not the output is on. I can do that by using the connection tool and selecting the logic gate and dragging to the light indicating I want the output of the logic gate controlling the light. There are also these little arrows in the signal wire that just appeared connecting the logic gate to the light, indicating that the signal is traveling from the gate to the light. I'm going to put down a few inputs here for us to mess with. In Scrap Mechanic, we can use quite a few different components as inputs. Sensors, buttons, and even other logic gates can function as inputs. For this demonstration, I'll use toggle buttons as our inputs, which are going to make it easy for us to control multiple inputs at once. If I place down a toggle button here, I can interact with it by pressing E. These lights in the top here indicate whether the button is on or off. I find it's a little hard to see them sometimes, so I'll be connecting a light to all the inputs. We can do this by using the connect tool again on the button and dragging to the light. Now this should have connected the output of the switch to the light. If I toggle the button, you can see that the light also toggles to indicate whether the switch is on or off. I can do the same thing to create a second input switch. Now I have two inputs ready to use. Now it's time to place down a logic gate and describe what's happening. I'm going to begin with the AND gate, which is the default gate for the logic block. I'll add a light to the output of the gate like I did earlier to make it easier to see what the output of the logic gate is. The AND gate works by turning its output on only if all of its inputs are also on. So if this switch AND this switch are on, the output will be on. Otherwise, it'll be off. We need to connect the switches to the logic gate though, and we could do that again using the connect tool. By dragging a signal line from the switch to the logic gate, we are taking the output of the switch as an input for the logic gate. Similarly, we can drag a signal wire from the other switch to the logic gate. Now the AND gate should only turn on if all of its inputs are also on. I can test this here by flipping both of the switches on, and now you can see the output of the logic gate is on. But if I flip either of the input switches off, the gate turns off. I can actually add as many inputs as I want. As long as every input connected to the gate is on, the gate's output will also turn on. That's AND gates, and the next gate I want to try out is the OR gate. Now the OR gate is quite similar to the AND gate, the only difference being it will turn on if any of its inputs are on, rather than all of them. I like to think it's called an OR gate because if this input OR this input is on, the output will be on. Here I'll show that by activating any of the input signals, and when I do that, the gate turns on. But if all the inputs are off, the gate will turn off. Another interesting thing about the OR gate is it doesn't care how many inputs are on. As long as there is at least one input that's on, the output will also be on. This leads us well into the next gate, which is the XOR gate. This one is related to the OR gate, but it also has this X, which sort of stands for exclusive. It's called an exclusive OR gate because it will only turn on if one of its inputs are on. If more than one input is on, or if none of the inputs are on, it turns off. There's also a special case for this gate when there's only two inputs. In this case, the gate will turn on if the two inputs are different. Here I have the left input on and the right input off, and you can see that the gate is on. And similarly, if I turn on the right input and off the left input, the gate remains on. But if the inputs are the same, the gate will turn off. This exclusivity is quite useful sometimes. XOR gates are used quite often in binary adder circuits, which I'll cover in a future video. AND, OR, and XOR gates are a few basic logic functions. There exist three other functions though that are very closely related to these three, called NAND, NOR, and XNOR gates. These are called their logical complements. Let's start with the NAND gate. 
Its name stands for not and. Rather than meaning the gate isn't an AND gate, the not has a different meaning. The NAND gate has the same outputs as the AND gate, just opposite. So instead of the gate turning on only when all of the inputs are on, like the AND gate, it turns off only when all the inputs are on. Otherwise, the output will be on. The NAND gate has a hidden function we can use to make another type of gate. If we run only a single input into the NAND gate, we have a new type of gate called an inverter. If we turn on the single input, since we only have one input, all of the inputs are on. This means that the NAND gate will turn off since all of its inputs are on. But when the input switch is off, the NAND gate will turn on since not all of its inputs are on. This means that the output of the gate will always be the opposite of what the input is. This gate is called an inverter since it's inverting whatever the input signal is. If I also place an AND gate next to the NAND gate and hook it up to the same two input switches, you can see that the output of the NAND gate is always the opposite of the AND gate. The next type of gate is a NOR gate. That stands for a NOT OR gate. This works similarly to the NAND gate in that it's the opposite of its complementary gate. So since the OR gate turns on if any of its inputs are on, and turns off only if all of its inputs are off, the NOR gate does the opposite and turns off if any of its inputs are on, but only turns on if all of its inputs are off. Finally, there's one last gate, the XNOR gate, which probably has the most complicated name. The exclusive NOT OR gate does the opposite of what the XOR gate is doing. So the XOR gate turned on only when one of its inputs were on. So the XNOR gate does the opposite and turns off only when one of its inputs are on. Otherwise, it turns on. Just like the XOR gate, if there are only two inputs going into the gate, it has a neat function. It will only turn on if the two inputs are the same. Here you can see when both inputs are off, the gate turns on. And when both inputs are on, the gate turns on as well. When the two inputs are different though, the gate turns off. This will be useful in comparison circuits where we want to see if two binary values are the same. An interesting thing about logic is that it's technically possible to make every logic gate out of either just NAND or NOR gates. In fact, I'll try to make an OR gate just from NAND gates right now. We can start by noticing something interesting about NAND and OR gates. The NAND gate only turns off when both inputs are on, and the OR gate will only turn off when both inputs are off. If we can somehow reverse when the NAND gate turns off, we can create an OR gate. The first thing someone might try to do is just invert the output of the NAND gate. We can create an inverter by running the output of the NAND gate into another NAND gate like this. If I cycle through the inputs now, it doesn't quite match up with the OR gate. In fact, this creates an AND gate. We need to get a little more creative with where we're placing the inverters. If we try inverting the two inputs instead of the output, we might get a more interesting result. Now I'll place those inverters here and hook up another set of lights to the inverters. This way, we can easily see what signals are being sent into the NAND gate. Let's start with both switches being off. This means both signals from the switches are running into inverters, which are outputting the opposite signal that they're receiving. So since both switches are off, the inverters are outputting on signals. This means that the NAND gate is receiving two on signals. Now the NAND gate only turns off if both of the signals it's receiving are on, and that's happening here. So the gate is gonna turn off. Let's look at the case of turning on one of the input switches. We still have one of the inverters receiving an off signal from the switch, so it'll continue to output an on signal. What's different though is this on switch. Its on signal is running into an inverter, which is well inverting it, and now putting an off signal. Now we have an on signal and an off signal running into the NAND gate. Since not all of the signals running into the NAND gate are on, the gate will turn on. This situation will occur whenever we turn on any of the input switches. This means we have a logic system that will only turn off if all of its inputs are off, which is just an OR gate. This demo is kind of tangential, but I think it's neat that every gate can be created from either just NAND or NOR gates. I'll be sticking to using the other gates though, since doing this to create every gate would just make it unnecessarily complicated. So guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts on the series are, I'd be interested in continuing this. Make sure to subscribe if you don't want to miss developing data storage. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask below. Until next time.